Hey there, Beards and Bolters fans. Walt here today, doing something a little different. Don't worry, plenty more bat reps are coming. But today I wanted to talk to you about my favorite part of the hobby, and that's painting. Sharing my love for painting minis and terrain is so rewarding. So I wanted to start making videos on how I paint my minis and terrain here on Beards and Bolters. Snot Goblin Games was kind enough to let us try out their new terrain system that they're featuring in their upcoming Kickstarter. They've come up with this innovative system to make push to fit tabletop modular terrain. It's kind of like Legos, but for terrain. With this being modular terrain, I wanted to make sure I could focus on that modularity as part of how we're going to paint this model. Meaning that I want to make sure these pieces work regardless of how you assemble them. I started with an ivory primer that I got from the hardware store, and then after that I took all the broken sections of the wall and painted them red with a contrast paint. However, this was a mistake I was going to have to fix later. Right after that I moved to an oil wash. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, I've never done oil washes before and I'm scared! Don't be! The whole point of this is to be messy. Basically what I did was I took some of my oil colors, mixed them with some mineral spirits, and just made a mess. I put it everywhere I could. Just slapped it on, and when I was done, I let it sit for a day and after a little bit, I had a great patina on it that gave it a nice warm look like it had been sitting in the woods for multiple years. The next thing to fix was that ugly red. It looked a little bit too much like organs or blood, and that's really not the vibe of what I'm going for today. So what I did was I grabbed Rattling Grime, and I covered that over the red. The combo together made a nice dark brick color, and I think that really helps tie it all together. So when I began this project, I thought the oil wash was actually going to do 90% of the work for me and make everything just get a little bit more coffee stained, and that would fix the red and would also fix my tan that wasn't really detailed, and also get all my little nooks and crannies full of details. Unfortunately, that's not how it worked out. You see, most of this terrain is flat, so there's not a lot of detail that I can pull from it using a wash. Instead, I'm going to actually have to paint every bit of detail that I want on this model. So what I did is I grabbed some chestnut ink from scale 75, through my airbrush I started to spray in some depth, going for all the areas that had blown out walls or nooks or crannies or any level of chip detail. So then I took a pale yellow and started edge highlighting all the buttresses and broken parts of the wall. I also used that pale yellow to try and pull out some extra details from just areas that I got a little too messy with. Taking a little bit of that pale yellow we went ahead and just went and made a line underneath any detail I saw on the model that was just messy paint. And this made it look like I freehand it cracks. So just to be clear, I'm completely just covering up mistakes. Now for the final part that sells the look, what I did is I took a pale blue and I ended up drawing out the mortar for all of my bricks. This really brought it all together and just made me feel a lot better about the project. Now we have something that has lots of different depth, edge highlighting, and all of the brick detail that we really wanted to get out. The final bit of this was the narrative elements that I wanted to achieve using some dirty down effect moss. I was really hoping the dirty down effect would give me the idea of texture. Unfortunately, it just kind of looks like dirty paint water that's matte finished. I don't know if I love it, so I had to do a little bit more using flock. So what I did was I just grabbed some Woodland Scenics flock and PVA glue and just glued it down. So since our key goal here is modularity, we need to make sure that a lot of these pieces of flock don't end up going in places that wouldn't work if it was a modular system. So I didn't put it on the top or bottom facings of each piece. Instead, I just focused on kind of using vertical lines or things that stopped in the midsection of the model so that way we didn't have that kind of issue. All right, guys, with that, the model's assembled. So it's now time for the grand review. Dude, you can't do that. That's a Squidmar thing. Yeah, you're probably right. What else can we go with? Um... Let the cat out of the bag. Put all the cards on the table. Bring the model to light. Divulge. Announce. Proclaim. Present. Show off. Rommelgate. The showcase. Yeah, we're gonna have to woodshed that a little bit more. It's clear that I don't really know what I'm doing. First video, give me some breaks. Without further ado, here's the model. Good terrain is about being able to have you and your opponent really understand what the terrain represents without too much problem, while also telling a great story. And I think we've done that here with this aged forest ruin. It looks fun, it's gonna be interesting, and I think it's gonna make for great games to come. In fact, we've got a battle report coming very shortly in which we use this terrain. So that's gonna be the end of this one. But I've got an idea for another great terrain video where I'm gonna take some of that same terrain and go a completely different route. Yeah, I wanna go fully assembled, add some 3D bits, add some green stuff, and go crazy with the color scheme. But I wanna make sure that that's what you guys wanna see. Quick thank you to our patrons out there. You guys are amazing and keep our lights on. Thank you so much for all your support. Also wanna give a shout out to Snot Goblin Games. These guys are great. Their Kickstarter is live August 9th. 
Be sure to check out the link in the description. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification, and please, let's have a conversation in the comments section. I want to know what you want from me when it comes to these hobby videos. If you have any suggestions or any feedback, I'd love to hear from you guys. Until then, keep on gaming.